What's up guys, South Carolina Mike here. Um, this video is kind of an impromptu video. What I was planning on doing today kind of got uh, delayed. Kind of, I'm not really upset, but I kind of wanted to get out today and do like a pretty good hike. Do some testing and equipment, but looks like the weather wasn't going to cooperate. So, um, lost my buddy that was going to go with me. I still plan on doing a little short day hike, but just not quite the uh, trip that I was planning on doing today. But anyway, I figured since I had all my gear packed up, I would take the opportunity to go through some of the stuff that I've got and some of the stuff I'm really happy about and some new additions. Uh, so a lot of you guys knew that I, or if you watched my videos, you knew that I was using this Mystery Ranch 3-Day Assault Pack. Um, took this for a 6.5 mile kind of like a day hike but I packed it up as if I was going for a two night three day um, kind of like hike camping pack uh, excursion up in the uh, semi northern part of the state of South Carolina uh, the bag is awesome um, it was I would say some it was comfortable it wasn't perfect but it was comfortable uh, the live wings if you get this pack you have to get in the live wings, have to. If you just go with this standard Kadura nylon strap, you're gonna be really wishing you spent a little bit of the extra money. You already spent enough money as it is on the pack. You might as well go ahead and spend the extra money on the live wing straps. But the one downside of this pack that I found out for me personally, for what I've been training for, is it is not big enough. Um, I tried to go with the, I think it's like a 30 liter it's like 2,000 cubic inches. I really tried to go like super lightweight minimum. Well, not so super lightweight with this pack, but definitely minimal. And uh, it's just too small. It's just too small. Um, at least for me. So I'm not going to get rid of it because I still like it. And I think I can still find uses for it. It'll be a great day pack or like, you know, like a overnight two day. It would be perfect. Um, so I upgraded. Just got this in, was really hoping on taking it. I'm still probably gonna take it today. I'm gonna load it all up and I'm still gonna go on like some, just like a minimal hike just to check it out and everything. But this is the uh, Osprey Talon 44. Um, just the initial, I mean, I haven't carried it yet. I loaded it up and kind of just walked around with it. It's really comfortable. Uh, I love all the, the way the straps particularly, I'm, like super picky and I end up having to tie a lot of this stuff up with either like tape or whatever. Uh, I'm really happy with the way um, a lot of the straps already have little tensioners on them so when you tighten them up they're not just like flopping in the wind. See if you can get a decent look at that. See when you tighten it up basically it cinches down so and it's attached to the main strap which is really nice and everything's like that. The waist strap, the you know shoulder straps, um, everything on this pack is pretty much like that. It still has an adjustable torso, torso like the Mystery Ranch, which I really appreciate to get that right fit for me. Um, of course, the load levelers, everything like that. Um, and it, this is a 44 liter, which I just loaded it all up a minute ago, and I had it loaded up for the hike I was planning on doing today. And uh, everything fits perfectly, and I even have a little bit more room in case I wanted to carry more food or throw another item in there or whatever. Um, so I would definitely, and basically what, what I'm training for is uh, uh, me and my buddy are hopefully planning on doing the entire Georgia section of the, of the Appalachian Trail um, sometime this year. So we know that there's, and that's with the approach which some people have told me to skip and I'm, we're not going to skip it. We're going to do the whole thing. That way we can say we did the whole entire Georgia section of the BAT. But anyway, there's lots of videos on this pack. I'll probably do a more thorough one once I fully test it. I don't really like to do reviews without using something. I think it's unfair to you guys. Um, but right out the box, I really like it. But that's all I can say about it for right now. Um, I will say that I'm really, really, really happy with, this is the uh, event stuff dry sack. Um, it's a waterproof Sea to Summit bag. I got the big one. I think it says 30 liters, but when you compress it down, it's not. A lot of people think this is my sleeping bag, but it's not. Uh, this is everything that's in my pack that I want to stay dry or that's not waterproof, i.e. 
that is already not like in a waterproof dry sack itself. Um, this is actually my spare pair of clothes, two pairs of socks, my, all my camp clothing, which would consist of like, you know, a long sleeve shirt, a short sleeve shirt, a pair of cargo pants that I can just lounge around that are really comfortable. Um, you know, a change of underwear, like I said, two pairs of smart wool socks. Uh, I do have a baklava in here, or baklava, however you want to say it, and I do also have um, a beanie cap in here. It's not going to get that cold, especially this time of year, but like I said, I'm packing full weight of what I would plan on carrying when we do the AT because I want to get used to about pairing, carrying that size pack, or at least the weight. So I'm loading out like I would load out for the trail. Um, and then of course it compresses down which is perfect and then what I do is I turn this sideways and it fits perfect in the bottom of the pack. Um, oh, I also have my uh, Thermarest pillow in here and I also have my Wooby. And if you don't know what a Wooby is, then Google it. Because <laughs> once you have one, you won't want to go without one. But whatever, that's just me personally. A lot of people are the same way. Um, I've got my uh, Arcteryx. This is uh, would go in the top part of the bag, up in the flap up here. It fits perfectly, and still has some extra room actually, which is quite nice. But uh, so I can put like a bandana or whatever. I don't know hat. Uh, but this is my Arcteryx. I think it's like uh, Alpha SL or something. Um, I got a really good deal on it from Moose Jaw. It's the best rain jacket ever. It just like compresses into like you can just keep folding it, but and it's awesome. I actually used to keep it uh, in this little ditty bag, this uh, Eagle Creek, um, call it like a quarter size or something. I don't know, but I used to keep it in this when I throw it in my bag. So, but this is a great, 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 great Gore-Tex jacket. Um, and of course, if you ever had Gore-Tex, you know it doesn't breathe 100%, but I'd rather be dry. I'm gonna be sweaty anyway, the amount of miles we're playing on hiking, so. Uh, this is my food bag, just a simple Sea to Summit bag. Uh, I've got this packed up with, um, got my cook kit in here, right in the top. This is my uh, Kettleist, GSI Kettleist. Uh, I have a video on this, um, been using it a lot more. Uh, absolutely love this cook set. Of course, I got the uh, Snow Peak Light Max uh, stove inside the cook kit with everything in there. Um, and I've weighed everything up. I'm going to try to see if I can post a PDF uh, for you guys to see exactly what everything, but everything you see here, including my water that I'll be packing is 42, 42 and change, 42 pounds. It's like 42.87. So, um, and then of course, you know, the regular, I've got like a, basically a week's worth of food in here. Um, and I've still got some room once you take out the catalyst. So if I needed to take out the catalyst, I've got room to add some more stuff, like some goodies. Um, if I wanted to so pretty happy with that got some wet wipes in here um, For cleanup I'm not gonna really take out everything but basically I've just got a whole bunch of mountain house stuff in here and I plan on throwing in some uh, some ramen and uh, Some cliff bars some granola bars a pound bag of uh, gorp trail mix that I'm gonna make myself and that'll be uh, my food for a week so um uh, the best South Carolina sleeping bag ever. That is my entire sleeping bag and it's uncompressed. You can actually keep on doing it. I got two stri tri straps over there if I really wanted to, but I don't need to, so I'm just going to leave it like this. It's synthetic. Um, not going to do down because it takes too long to dry out. And in South Carolina, we got pop ups, thunderstorms pretty much all the time. And then, of course, on the Appalachian Trail, you have the same thing. So I'm not going down. Plus, I'm a pretty hot natured guy. I actually end up usually kicking off the covers throughout the year and I like the cold weather so but anyway this is a 55 degree they call it a travel sack from REI but this is by far my favorite sleeping bag ever mostly due to size and the fact that it completely unzips and I can use it as a big blanket or I can just unzip the it has a foot a mummy bag type fit to it so it has a hooded uh, so you can zip up your head, you know, completely covered. But it also has a zip down at the feet that you can undo. So if I want to jump out of my hammock in the middle of the night to go run to the privy, 
I can unzip my feet, stick my feet out, slide my camp shoes on, hike up my mummy bag, do my business, and I never really have to get out of my bag, which is super nice. Or you can lay around the campfire at night and hike it up kind of like a skirt or a kilt and uh, be super comfortable that way too. Anyway, highly recommend this and it's very affordable um, compared to a lot of other sleeping systems that people use. But this combined with my Wibby, I've never needed anything else. In fact, usually I end up kicking the Wibby out. So that's my entire sleep system. Um, I do want to talk about this, but I'm going to save it for a minute. Uh, this is my Patagonia Nano Puff jacket. This is my camp jacket. Um, usually, like uh, when I'm hiking, I use a pair of, this is my favorite setup at the moment. These are Columbia, they kind of like feel like a swimsuit type material, but they're really stretchy. Um, so they're really comfortable and they have a really, I don't know if I can get this on camera, but they have a pretty wide gusset that's out throughout. It's like a whole entire huge midsection for the crotch area, which I find extremely comfortable. They dry super fast. Of course, a lot of Columbia sportswear is all like sun protected or whatever. Oh, and they like water runs right off these. Of course, it's just that DuPont repellent, which does eventually like wash off or wash out. So you can retreat it or you can do what I do and just let it dry because it does it pretty fast. And then I just use like a standard polyester shirt and this is what I hike in. Uh, this happens to be an Adidas. It's a climate cool. Uh, I like or climate light, excuse me. Climate light weighs like five ounces. Um, the shorts are like 10 ounces. So, and then I use the Smart Wool PhDs, best socks ever. I have tried the Darn Tough. They're not as comfortable. They probably last longer, but these are a year and a half old and I don't have any holes yet. So year and a half out of a $15 pair of socks, that's cool with me. By the way, I've never worn out a pair of Smart Wools, by the way. Um, I'm not gonna show you my underwear, but I like those Under Armour boxer briefs. The uh, UA Mesh, by the way, they breathe a lot better. Um, but when I get to camp, usually I'll change into my camp clothing. Like I said, it's a pair of cargo shorts. Um, I do carry one of those Columbia long sleeve, button up long sleeves. Uh, in case there's like really bugs, those work really well. Um, woven fabric tends to help really good with bugs. Uh, bugs have a hard time biting through a woven fabric. If you're wearing something like this polyester sleeve shirt I'm wearing now, or what I usually hike in, like the short sleeve, um, bugs can bite right through this, guys. So for camp, when you're not like moving, um, I definitely recommend packing like a long sleeve woven shirt that's comfortable. Those Columbia's I find work really well. They also dry. They got sunproofing in them. But this is my Patagonia Nano Puff. Love this jacket. My wife got this for me for Christmas and love it. Love it. And it fits perfectly underneath my uh, Arcteryx shell. So combined, if it gets cold, I can do that. But normally I just use this as a camp jacket or if we're stopping for lunch or whatever, I'll pull it out and throw it on. Uh, it's super comfortable, super light, and it gets pretty warm actually. Um, uh, let's see, I do carry, and some people are probably going to be like, well, you got a shell, why are you carrying this? Well, I carry it because I don't like to get, like, super soaking wet. I don't mind sweat, but I carry a military, this is an ACU military poncho, and basically this keeps me from having to wear it to, to carry a pack cover, um, and then if it gets to the point where it's kind of... See, in South Carolina, man, it can get like super humid here. It can get like 80 degrees, but you get pouring down rain. So if I go ahead and strap on my shell, yeah, I'm dry, but then my pack's getting drenched. And if I just throw this over me, the wind moves pretty good around it and through it. Um, and then my pack's dry and I'm dry. And I can also just double this as a shelter in case I don't have time to like really do the whole hammock setup and I get lazy or really tired. Uh, I have laid against a tree and nothing but this poncho and falling asleep and waited for the rain to stop and then didn't set up. So military ponchos for the win. Is it heavy? Yeah, it's 20 ounces, but I feel like it's worth it. And it really is 20 ounces, by the way. Um, all right, so of course, everybody knows about the k Hiker Pros. I'm not gonna go through the trouble of taking this out of the bag. 14 ounces, is it worth it? You can be a trooper and not do anything or you can be somewhat of a trooper and do 
the whole Aquamira drops thing, personally, I don't feel like having to wait 15 minutes to drink my water if I'm really thirsty. And I don't like the taste of iodine. And really, I don't mind pumping these. So, to me, is it worth it? Yeah. Am I looking at other systems? There's that Sawyer Gravity combined with the platypus bags. That looks pretty cool. If I'm camping with more than myself or my buddy, he uses the Hiker Pro also. Um, like if I got my wife with me, if it's me and her, my buddy, maybe his wife, or maybe some other people, I would definitely look into that 4 liter platypus Sawyer um, gravity system because that looks pretty cool. But for right now, the Hiker Pro does it for me. Um, I do carry, I carry a 72 ounce, um, this is a Omega Beast by Camelback. It's got like a little baffling system in it so that it can't break. Of course, I haven't heard a lot of these of Camelback's breaking, but it's supposed to help. Um, but this is a 72 ounce Camelback. Works just like any other Camelback, so nothing really special about it other than the, pathling, the baffling system. Um, which keeps it from expanding too far like, like a balloon. Like it can only expand so far because of that internal baffling system. So it keeps it slim, which is nice. And then I carry a Nalgene, so all together I've got 72 ounces with the Camelback and then 32 ounces with my Nalgene. I could probably do like 10 miles, um, and that's plenty enough water, and that's stopping for lunch, cooking with the water, and dinner. So I feel confident with that much water on me. Uh, let's see, I do carry a MSR pack towel. This is the large. I'm still debating on this. Um, I got this for like... Close to nothing with my R and I D, uh, my R R E I dividend one year. Um, I do like it. It's small. It weighs almost nothing. I mean, like literally, and I can just kind of like cram it in there. But I don't know. I'm still debating on whether or not to keep this or not. It ends up being more of like a sweat rag. With my my bandana serves that purpose. So I guess if I'm going somewhere swimming, it would be nice. But it you normally either ends up like wiping the rain off my gear, so I can stow it. That's probably the majority of what it gets used for. But, um, uh, this is just a uh, complete roll of toilet paper that I put into a Ziploc bag, which is pretty nice. Yes, that is a whole roll of toilet paper. A lot of people don't know that. You can compress it that flat. So, I carry actually a few things of toilet paper because people always forget toilet paper. How can you forget toilet paper? Okay, so we got baby wipes. Work great. Okay, I got a whole roll, it's flattened. This is mine, by the way. And then, just in case, I carry a ditty bag and I carry a couple of those toilet paper that you get out of the MRE that I can give away. Oh, that's the salt, excuse me. I carry two of those. Those are the toilet paper that you get out of the MRE. I carry those. Those are what I give to other people. Not comfy, but it's better than nothing. This is just a little bit of salt, and it's like one of these hot beverage bags, also out of an MRE. I find it very useful for picking up things and stowing trash, because um, always pick up your trash when you're on the trail. As far as first aid kit, some people probably aren't going to like this, but I carry an Adventure Medic Pocket Medic, and that's it. It's got a pair of tweezers, um, safety pin, a couple little antiseptic towelettes, moleskin, Motrin, uh, sting relief pad, some sterile dressing, and a, hand, a couple of band-aids, and some uh, antibiotic ointment, and that's it. That's what I find fits perfect. It's lightweight. Two ounces, by the way. Two ounces. Super flat. You can pretty much put it anywhere. Um, God, this video is getting long. I do carry a pair of gloves with me, although most of the time I just end up, like, I use these mostly when I'm foraging for, like, firewood in the evenings and stuff, so... I don't have to worry about sticking my hands on anything or getting bit by anything, or at least of the spider bug nature. Of course, a snake is still going to bite through these, but I don't know. I like having gloves, especially when I'm working with tools. So these wear uh, two and a half ounces. They're the Camelback um, Heat Grip. They're vented. Very nice. They don't make my hands sweat too bad, and it gives me that extra layer of protection you know, when I need it. Uh, this is my personal ditty bag. Like I said, this is the Eagle Creek quarter packet system. Uh, it's like $8 bag. Is it worth 8 bucks? I think so. Uh, in here I've got my Sea of Summit spoon, spork, whatever you want to call it. 
it's more of a spoon really, but I like it. This is my main eating utensil. I've got my Petzl headlamp. I've got some waterproof storm matches. Um, really dig this. This is the, called the Max Cap XL. It's anodized aluminum. Probably paid too much for it, but it's nice. I put a monkey's fist on it with a. Is it a defense mechanism? Probably not. I just threw it on there because I thought it was cool. But there's a monkey's fist that I made. So, anyway, got a couple glow sticks. Got a red and green one. I uh, got an extra spoon that's wrapped in plastic in case I lose mine, break it, bend it, or I have to give a spoon to my buddy. Because um, people forget stuff. A uh, little antiseptic spray. I've got some green electrical tape. You can always use electrical tape. I wrapped it around this whole entire thing. I think I've got like four or five feet of electrical tape wrapped around here. So, pretty cool idea. Picked that up from a lot of EDCers. They like to do the whole electrical tape, duct tape thing, like wrapped around. Um, got my toothbrush. It's just a regular toothbrush that I chopped the end off of. Not going high speed fancy on you. I uh, find that works the best and it's disposable. Um, got a whistle, box 40, just in case. Got 50 foot of some night eyes. This is reflective 2.4 millimeter, 50 foot. It's uh, when a flashlight hits it, man, this thing lights up like it's nobody's business. And when you're hammock camping or just regular tent camping, it's good to use stuff like this so people don't walk into your tent at night. Hopefully they're using a flashlight, but this helps and it's super strong multi-uses, I can repair guy lines, I can use this as a bear bag rope. Cordage is important, period. Why not get the cool reflective kind? Uh, these are some homemade fire starters that I got from a buddy of mine. They're awesome. Got those packed in there just in case it's like really wet and rainy. They are waterproof, got them in a bag. But uh, that's pretty much everything that goes in my ditty bag. And last but not least, this is like my personal effects bag. This is a Maxpedition little mini organizer. This whole thing weighs 13 ounces, by the way, in case anybody's wondering, because they're like, oh my gosh, he's getting up there with stuff. So what do I have in here? I have, I have my cards, in case I need to stop ATM, get some cash. Yeah, make sure that stuff isn't like showing. I've got a notebook right in the rain. I've got a spare pocket knife. This is a Spyderco Leaf Storm. Uh, spare light, kind of spare. Stylus Pro. Got a uh, lighter here. It's got a zip tie, so that way, use the small kind and it'll fit right in that notch. And then you won't have to worry about your gas like leaking out if it hits something up in here. Plus, it keeps it from sliding all the way down in that. Anyway, thumb drive, got some important documents. Always carry a little bit of cash and a spare set of batteries for the Stylus Pro or my uh, Petzl headlamp. And that's it. And now I keep my IDs in the front. And always embrace the suck. Oh, last but not least, this video is getting extremely long, but whatever. I like gear, you guys like gear. If you watch the whole video, right on. I recently switched from using which, by the way, there's nothing bad about this tent. This is a Marmot early light two-person tent. I know it kind of looks big. It's really not that big. Um, you can compress this down, actually. So, yeah, it gets kind of tight. I used to carry this on the bottom of my pack. This is a good two-person tent. It weighs 5.5 pounds, so it's not too heavy, especially when it's strapped to the bottom of the pack. But for me personally, I don't know. I kind of wanted to try something new and a little lighter and I thought hammock camping seemed like it would be pretty cool. So this is going with the other equipment, it's going away and I have upgraded to hammock with a rain fly. Got my straps, tree hugger straps, which is just basically some nylon cordage, not cordage, excuse me, nylon straps, it's got like super high test on it. You wrap these around your tree, yada yada yada, and hook your carabiners or you use a marlin spike hitch, which is pretty cool. There's lots of videos on it. This is my hammock. As you can see, it gets really compressed if I wanted to, but I'm not going to need to because it'll fit right in my pack. 
it's got an end on both sides so you never have to have your hammock lying on the ground you open one side once you get your tree hanger straps pulled up you pull out your these are whoopee slings you hook one side okay so I've got it hooked right this side's hooked now now I go over to my other tree open the other end pull out its whoopee sling and then basically it never has to touch the ground pull the whoopee slings to make your adjustment and you're good to go the things I want to note on this, this is a light owl, yeah, the light owl, not the night owl, but the light owl. It's 20 ounces with the whoopee slings. Um, it's 20 ounces with the whoopee slings and the tree huggers, and the tree hugger straps. It's 20 ounces. So the reason I went with this brand particularly, I really like the fact that, number one, the customer service was completely unmatched. Um, Mart, I, I sent an email to Wilderness Logics and told them what I was interested in, told them what I was planning on doing. And Marty was nice enough, like instantly, within like five minutes, he sent me an email back, told me what their turnaround time was. I said, all right, that's cool. Um, you know, and put in my order that night. He told me, this was Wednesday. He told me that it would, they got like a five day turnaround as far as it would ship out. So I was looking at like possibly Tuesday that it would ship. I ordered it Wednesday and I got it in four days. I ordered it Wednesday night and I got it on a Saturday, which is just sick turnaround. In fact, Marty was pretty funny. I don't know if I can show you this. Let's see if I can do this. He actually put, thanks Michael, how's that for turnaround, Marty? Pretty cool. Um, that's some sick customer service, by the way. And he answered all my questions. I wanted a brown hammock with a brown tarp. I got to pick my colors, which was cool. The colors that they had available. I had some other tarp questions. Um, the tarp itself is their tadpole, but I kind of got a couple things added onto it, which are pretty cool. Which, by the way, this is the uh, this is the tarp. You can see there's a lot of extra room in the stuff sack. So it's pretty small all together. That's the whole thing. You can see my hand there is maybe like a size comparison. Um, the uh, tarp with the bag is like 11.5 ounces, I believe. Um, it's got, I did add the uh, triangle hooks because I plan on using some trekking poles. You can put them in the ends here like that and extend out the side of the hammock, kind of use it like, or excuse me, not the hammock, but extend it out like the shelter to use as, excuse me, to extend out the ends of the tarp to use as a shelter. Whew, that took it some time to get out. I'm not gonna unfold this whole thing, but you can basically see it's a sill nylon. It is super lightweight. It's gonna work great to keep the weather off of me in my hammock, to keep my stuff dry, and um, pretty easy to get back in the stuff sack. So, all together, customer service, outstanding, outstanding. I mean, like, I can't even stress how much more outstanding their customer service is. Um, highly recommend Wilderness Logics, guys. I will definitely be ordering more stuff from them if I need to get, like, an under quilt or a top quilt. We'll see. But customer service is key. Uh, the one little thing I do have, I use this for a double thing. This is an Inu. A lot of people are like, whoa, you just had your hammock. Yeah, this isn't, well, it is a hammock, but it's not a hammock for me. Uh, this is a gear slinger. I do keep an extra can of my stove fuel in there. It's a good spot for it. Anyway, this is, uh, I'm not going to roll it all out, but basically it's like a mini hammock. Okay, it's seven ounces. And it's acts and looks just like a regular hammock, but it fits underneath my hammock for all my gear. So that way when you're laying in your hammock, you can just reach out, reach underneath you, grab whatever you need to grab. You don't have to necessarily get out of your hammock. I think it's a really cool idea. It is a luxury item, but it keeps my stuff from laying on the ground and whatever. I think it's a cool idea. We're going to try it out. It's seven ounces. So all together, like I said, with a week's worth of food, I'm looking at 42.87 pounds. The only things I do not have in here as of right now are a pair of camp shoes. I do not have 
a camera system that I plan on carrying because this video camera would be entirely not feasible. I might just use my iPhone. I don't know if you guys got any comments about that. Let me know. Um, and anything else I seem to forget if you guys, um, other than trekking poles, I'm saving up for them. I know I need to get those. I'm trying, I'm looking at the Lecky or Likey, L E K I, trekking poles for good things. I've heard bad things about Black Diamonds. They've got horrible customer service from what I hear. So, but yeah, if you guys see anything I'm missing or got any comments or suggestions, give me a shout, let me know, and uh, South Carolina Mike out.